This is TK Coleman, and you're listening to another episode of TK's Two Cents. Today, let's talk about setting boundaries and asking questions. Let's dive right in with tweet number one. If you never develop the guts to say, this isn't for me, you'll spend the rest of your life nervously jumping when other people tell you to jump. We call them yes men. You ever seen one? Someone who pretends to laugh at jokes that aren't even funny. They agree to attend parties and events that they don't want to be at. They act as if they agree with ideas that deep down inside they think are totally stupid or a waste of time. Yes, men. They don't want to rock the boat. They don't want to say no. They don't want anyone to be mad at them or irritated with them or disappointed in them. And so they exchange their natural God-given beauty for the ugliness of being a nervous yes man. There's nothing more undignified, there's nothing more unbecoming to who you and I are meant to be as human beings than a yes man. To be a yes man is to be someone that is so disconnected from self-authenticity that everything that you do is bound by the preferences of another, bound by the ever-shifting moods of another person. Whatever another person feels like doing, that's what you do. You go along in doing that. Lots of reasons for why we might become yes men. Maybe we're afraid of losing a job. Maybe we're afraid of losing a friend and being alone and never having anybody like us. Maybe we feel like some opportunity in front of us is the best that we could ever possibly do. If you've ever felt like that, I like to invite you to consider an alternative. No matter how good of an opportunity there might be in front of you, whether it be to date someone, to be a friend with someone, to accept the job offer. If that opportunity requires you to say no to your conscience and no to your convictions and no to having a backbone, no to being who you really want to be, no matter how much it pays, no matter how much it rewards you socially, eventually, eventually, it'll wear you down and you'll become the kind of person who can't even look people in the eye anymore And no amount of the things that you get in exchange for being a yes man will allow you to be able to enjoy them. At least that's the way I see it. Some people, perhaps they can live with it. But if you're like me and you respect your depth and your dignity as a human being, don't sell your soul just to avoid controversy. I once heard someone say, most people sell their soul not for a big bag of money, but just to keep a stranger on the internet from being mad at them. Isn't that something when you think about it? We think of selling our souls as something that's limited to, oh, she sold her soul to be famous. He sold his soul to be a million dollars. Not only is that bad, but for most people, it's not even that good. For most people who sell their souls, it's, oh, they didn't want anybody to laugh at them. They didn't want anybody to talk smack about them behind their back. Man, what a life. What a life. Don't be a yes man. Be a no man. Set the boundaries. You don't want to do something? Be honest about it. You don't believe in something? Be honest about it. You disagree with something? Be honest about it. You don't have to be disrespectful to to disagree with people. You don't have to be rude in order to say no. If you're concerned about being kind and being compassionate and being cool and being charming, find a way to be all of those things in a way that gives you the freedom to say no. And when you say no and take care of you and do what you want to do, you'll find an easier time being naturally compassionate towards people anyway. Let's go to tweet number two. Don't let the fear of sounding stupid be stronger than the desire to get answers to your questions. It's better to look stupid and become smart than to look smart and never grow. Have you ever been in a classroom before? And you're confused by something and you just nod in your head because even though you don't know what's going on, you don't want to look like the only person in the room that's absolutely lost. What's the risk? Everyone will turn around and point at you and say, ha, 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 that person's lost. Man, the consequences are so much worse because you end up failing your test. You end up getting into a situation where you really need that knowledge, but you didn't ask the questions that you needed answers to. And so now you're unprepared for the heat of the moment. So many times we value looking successful over being successful. We value looking rich over being rich. We value looking free 
over actually being free. And whenever you prioritize the optics of looking a certain way, the optics of sounding a certain way, seeming a certain way, over actually being that way, I call it the prioritization of optics over ontology. Optics is about how things look. Ontology is about what it is. Whenever you prioritize optics over ontology, you compromise your potential. You compromise who you can become in the future based on a superficial desire to look good right now. There's nothing wrong with wanting to look good. It's just not worth doing if it keeps you from becoming actually good. It's better to take the hit of looking like someone who doesn't know right now so that you can get the knowledge and the skill and the help that you need so that you can dominate your life in the future. Just because a virtue is a virtue doesn't mean you are an evil person for not embodying it right here and right now. Virtue, just like any other skill, takes practice, it takes discipline, it takes hard work. And sometimes, in order to get there, you've gotta reveal your vices. You've gotta be able to say, I don't know this, I'm not good at this, I have a hard time with this, I lack discipline in this area, I have these weaknesses. And yeah, you might look weak, you might look stupid, you might look incompetent, but if that's the price you gotta pay to become smart, to become strong, and to become competent, it's more than worth it. Set the boundaries you need to set in order to become great. Ask the questions you need to ask in order to become smart. It's the best way to go about it, my friends. Hey, that's all for today. If you're listening on the podcast, be sure to hit the like button. Be sure to subscribe. Be sure to leave a comment. If you're listening on YouTube, be sure to leave a comment. And don't hesitate to share this with a family member or a friend that you think might benefit from hearing these rants and riffs. Peace out, y'all.